hey guys welcome to this video uh, in the last video we have discussed regarding the chemical regulation of the respiration in this video we will discuss regarding the neural regulation of the respiration for those people who haven't watched that video on the chemical regulation of the respiration i will leave a link in the description please go and watch that video to get the clarity and the concept regarding the chemical regulation of the respiration as discussed in the prior video regulation of the respiration can be done by two mechanisms one is by a neural mechanism another one is by a chemical mechanism chemical mechanism we have already discussed and in the neural control basically there are two types of neural controls which is helping in regulation of respiration one is called as involuntary control another one is called as voluntary control so what is the meaning of this involuntary control involuntary control also means automatic control or automatic regulation so automatic or control or automatic regulation means respiration can occur that is i am breathing and that respiration is occurring without any conscious effort when i am at rest i am not consciously aware that i am inspiring and i am expiring this is what is the meaning of involuntary control or automatic control even when i am sleeping the level of my consciousness is very less even then there is something in my central nervous system which is contracting and relaxing the muscles because of which i am breathing so this is what is the meaning of automatic control or automatic regulation so that means there are some neurons in the central nervous system which are emitting spontaneous rhythmic discharges they are spontaneously emitting these discharges they are spontaneously emitting the impulses and these impulses are going and stimulating the muscles of respiration and we are breathing and this is happening spontaneously nobody is controlling them okay so this involuntary control system these group of neurons which are emitting the action potentials which are going and uh, uh, causing the stimulation of the muscles and then muscles are contracting and this is leading to inspiration and expiration this involuntary control system it is located in parts of the brain stem and to be more specific it is located in two parts one is our pons another one is our medulla oblongata so these are the two regions where the involuntary control system or the neurons which control the regulation are located so this is regarding the involuntary control then we also have voluntary control the center for the voluntary control is located higher up in the cerebral cortex what does the voluntary control do voluntary control helps to change the rate rhythm and the depth of breathing now i am voluntarily talking so when i am talking i have to change my rate of respiration i have to change my rhythm rhythm is changed because when i continuously talk i am continuously expanding the air out and then i take the air in so the rhythm is changed and the depth of breathing is also changed so such instances are so many like when a person is talking when a person is swimming and when a person is swimming and he goes inside the water he has to hold his breath and sometimes the person may voluntarily hyperventilate so whenever i voluntarily want to change the rate rhythm and depth of breathing the center for voluntary control is coming from the higher center which is nothing but the cerebral cortex so this is clear regarding involuntary control and voluntary control center for involuntary control is located in the brain stem what is it doing it is discharging spontaneously and rhythmically the impulses by which the person is breathing even without his consciousness and voluntary control is coming into action when i voluntarily want to change rate rhythm and the depth of the breathing okay and it is facilitating in so many acts and the center for voluntary control is where it is at the level of the cerebral cortex so one is at the level of the brain stem another one is at the level of the cerebral cortex so out of these two today we are going to study only regarding the automatic control or the involuntary control of respiration so automatic neural regulation is done by a center which is called as respiratory center so what is this respiratory center respiratory center is nothing but this is a group of neurons okay which are located bilaterally both the sides where they are located they are located in the medulla oblongata as well as in the pons 
So if someone asks you, what do you understand by the word respiratory center? It's very simple. These are the group of neurons which are located on both the sides in the medulla oblongata and the pons of the brainstem. Fine. Next, these groups of neurons, they are subdivided into four groups. Two groups are present in the medulla and two groups are present in the pons. The two groups which are present in the medulla, these are called as one dorsal respiratory group of neuron which is designated as DRG, another one ventral respiratory group of neurons which is designated as VRG. So from now on if I am saying DRG that means dorsal respiratory group and then if I say VRG that means it is ventral respiratory group of neurons. Then coming to the pons, in the pons also we are having two centers. One is called as pneumotaxic center Another one is called as apneustic center. It's very important to remember all these four centers. Two in the medulla, two in the pons. Two in the medulla are DRG and VRG. Two in the pons is pneumotaxic center and the apneustic center. So now let's see the role of these individual group of neurons in regulation of respiration. So first let's start with dorsal respiratory group of neurons. So the dorsal respiratory group of neurons, this group of neurons, basically they are located in a nucleus which is called as nucleus tractus solitarius. Okay, nucleus tractus solitarius. Very important to remember where it is located. First point. Second point is that the dorsal respiratory group of neurons, they play the most fundamental role they play the most fundamental role okay again a uh, important point okay these neurons why i am telling that they play the most fundamental role because these neurons they generate basic respiratory rhythm okay these are the group of neurons which are generating the basic respiratory rhythm which is causing the respiration, which is causing the act of breathing. That's why these are the neurons which are very, very important. They are generating basic respiratory rhythm. And how is this respiratory rhythm? This respiratory rhythm, these two words are extremely important. It is spontaneous and it is inspiratory. It is spontaneous. So what is the meaning of spontaneous? Spontaneous means it is being generated on its own without the influence of any other neurons and this rhythm is inspiratory that means this rhythm is causing inspiration this rhythm is causing inspiration so in another way the neurons which are located in the dorsal respiratory group are almost acting like the pacemaker cell in SA node there is a pacemaker so how do we define a pacemaker a pacemaker is a tissue or a cell which has the capacity to uh, which has the capacity to generate its own impulses. Here, the dorsal respiratory group of neurons is also developing or generating the impulses on its own. So, it is spontaneously coming up and these impulses are inspiratory. That is, they are causing only inspiration at rest. Inspiration at rest. Now, what does, what, so, so, which is that which is causing expiration at rest? I don't need any impulse for uh, expiration to occur and I don't need any action of the muscles because expiration is a passive process which occurs at rest. You're understanding this? So expiration is basically occurring because of the elastic recoiling. What I want is inspiration to occur and this inspiration is coming from dorsal respiratory group of neurons which is generating the impulses spontaneously and which is only supplying to the muscles of the inspiration at rest. So that's why we call it as spontaneous inspiratory rhythm. I hope you understood this. Okay. So that means when we do the experiment, like let's say I take the medulla and I am cutting off all the afferent input which is coming to the medulla and then I section the medulla above and below. And then I see these neurons which are present in the dorsal respiratory group. And there I see without any influence coming from above or below, without any influence coming from the afferent neurons, I see that the dorsal respiratory group of neurons is emitting repetitive bursts of inspiratory neuronal action potential. Okay, so that means the dorsal respiratory group of neurons which are present in the medulla, they are not under influence of any neurons, 
they have the capacity to generate repetitive inspiratory neuronal action potentials on their own. So, indirectly we say that the dorsal respiratory group of neurons are acting like pacemakers. And to which group of muscles they are supplying? They are supplying to the inspiratory group of muscles which leads to inspiration at rest. And expiration, I don't need anyone because expiration is occurring because of the elastic recoiling. Expiration is a passive process. Fine. So, the neurons which are present in the dorsal respiratory group because they are only supplying to the inspiratory group of muscles. Hence, these neurons are called as eye neurons. Okay. Because they are supplying only to the inspiratory group. Okay. Not only that. Not only that, the dorsal respiratory group has the ability to generate the impulses and it is a, it has got the ability to generate spontaneous inspiratory rhythm. The dorsal respiratory group is also an area of sensory termination. Which nerves are terminating? Vagus and the glossopharyngeal nerve. This vagus and the glossopharyngeal nerve, they are carrying information from baroreceptors. They are also carrying information from the chemoreceptors and they are also carrying information from the receptors which are present in the lungs and sometimes also in the chest wall. Okay, so there is an sensory input which is coming from all these receptors via the vagus and the glossopharyngeal nerve to the dorsal respiratory group. So that means the dorsal respiratory group of neurons are having two functions. One is they generate the basic respiratory rhythm which is spontaneous and inspiratory. Okay, that's why the neurons which are present in the DRG are called as eye neurons. Second is that the dorsal respiratory group is also an area where sensory termination is occurring. A sensory termination is occurring where the sensations are received from the vagus and the glossopharyngeal nerve and this is coming from baroreceptors, chemoreceptors and also the receptors which are present in the lungs and the chest wall. So this is regarding the dorsal respiratory group of neurons. So this is the location. See here in the medulla. So this is the brain stem, medulla, pons and the midbrain. Lower down we have the spinal cord. So this is where the dorsal respiratory group of neurons are located and lateral to them there is one more group which is called as the ventral respiratory group and this is higher up. This is pons and this is where the pontine respiratory group are located. That is two, two, two centers are there. One is the pneumotaxic center and another one is the apneustic center. So these are the two centers in the pons. Fine. So now let's see what is the role of the ventral respiratory group. So dorsal respiratory group caused inspiration during quiet normal breathing. Expiration doesn't require anything during quiet normal breathing. Expiration is a passive process occurring because of elastic recoiling. So first let's see where is this ventral respiratory group located. It is located lateral to the DRG and where it is located? It is located in two nuclei. One is called as, again important to remember, okay, nucleus ambiguous and nucleus retroambiguous. Where was DRG located? Yeah, DRG was located in the nucleus tractus solitarius in the medulla, okay. So, what is the role of VRG? The ventral respiratory group of neurons are totally silent. There is no activity taking place in the ventral respiratory group of neurons during normal quiet breathing. A very very important word which I am using is this. Normal quiet breathing when the person is at rest and he is normally and quietly breathing. The VRG is totally silent. No activity is coming from the VRG. And what is the role of VRG? Okay, that means quiet breathing is caused only by DRG. Why? Because they stimulate inspiration only. And during the quiet breathing, it is only the inspiration which needs to be stimulated because expiration is a passive process. So that means what is the role of VRG? VRG is coming into play whenever there is a need for increased pulmonary ventilation. Whenever there is a need for increased pulmonary ventilation, when do you think I want more of pulmonary ventilation? One very good example is 
whenever the person is exercising. Whenever the person is exercising, I need more amount of pulmonary ventilation. I want the rate of respiration also to increase and the depth of respiration also to increase. That point of time, what is happening is that the signals from the DRG are spilling over to VRG. So like this was the, our DRG. DRG was supplying the inspiratory muscles and we were happy and inspiration and expiration was happening at rest. Okay. Now what happened is suddenly this person started to do some exercise. Now his rate and depth of breathing has to increase. Now the signals from the DRG are going to spill to VRG and now VRG is going to activate the muscles. So VRG is going to activate which muscles? VRG is going to activate the accessory muscles of inspiration as well as the accessory muscles of expiration because these accessory muscles are the one which are coming into play when I need an increased pulmonary ventilation as happens in exercise. Okay, so stimulating both accessory muscles of inspiration as well as expiration okay so that means vrg contains both inspiratory neurons as well as expiratory neurons whereas drg contained only the inspiratory neurons so these are called as the i and e neurons so if you want to tell uh, okay tell me a few differences between uh, drg and vrg drg is the one which is a rhythm generator it is acting like a pacemaker okay it is having its own impulses and it is generating the rhythm Second point is that DRG is only stimulating inspiration during quiet breathing at rest. Okay. But VRG is not a rhythm generator. VRG is coming into action when a person needs an increased amount of pulmonary ventilation. So that point of time, VRG is stimulating both the accessory muscles of inspiration as well as expiration. So we have both I neurons as well as E neurons. So this is the role of dorsal respiratory group and ventral respiratory group. To be to, to make it very simple, DRG is acting only during quiet normal breathing. VRG is coming into action when there is an increased need of pulmonary ventilation. So that means DRG is supplying only the inspiratory muscles which are required at rest, and VRG is supplying to accessory muscles of inspiration and expiration. So here we have I neurons and E neurons. There we have only the I neurons. This is the basic difference between DRG and VRG. So it's a very nice diagram here. So here we can see this is our medulla. Okay. This is our pons higher up. And in the pons, I'll, I'll come to this. We have two centers, the pneumotaxic center and the apneustic center. And in the medulla, this is our dorsal respiratory group of neurons. And here we are seeing the dorsal respiratory group of neurons. They are supplying our diaphragm and they are also supplying the external intercostal muscles. So these are the two muscles which aid in inspiration during quiet breathing okay that's the role of drg once my body feels i need an increased amount of pulmonary ventilation see here there's a small arrow mark he shows here the impulses from the drg are spilling over to ventral respiratory group and now the ventral respiratory group is stimulating the accessory respiratory muscles as well as the muscles which are required for expiration. So it is stimulating the accessory inspiratory muscles as well as accessory expiratory muscles. So this is the difference between DRG and VRG. Okay. One more thing that we have to remember here is that regarding the DRG more so with the DRG the transmission of impulse is not an instantaneous burst of action potential. That means 
when that impulse is transmitted from the dorsal respiratory group of neurons via the phrenic nerve to the diaphragm the diaphragm just doesn't contract immediately and relax as you yourself can experience whenever you are breathing the contraction of the diaphragm is occurring very very slowly over a period of time so that means the transmission of impulse is not an instantaneous if it were to be instantaneous then we would have had repetitive repetitive gasps whenever we are breathing <laughs> like this but it is not like that so the transmission of impulses is never sudden the transmission of impulse is slowly it is increasing and then it reaches a peak and then it stops then inspiration stops and then there is beginning of expiration so it is something like this so the pattern of activity in the both drg and vrg but more so with the drg is ramp like pattern is what is called as a ramp like so action potential frequency is going to increase gradually till it reaches the crescendo so here we can understand in this diagram better this is the lung volume and this is the drg here you can see the inspiratory action potential is rising gradually there is a gradual rise and then it reaches the peak and after that it is stopping something is there which is stopping this inspiration and once the inspiration is stopping there is beginning of expiration now after the expiration has occurred again the second impulse is generated in the drg again the same thing is going to happen what is happening the impulse is again slowly increasing in the frequency again it is going to reach the peak and again it stops here and again there is beginning of expiration so such a kind of activity or such a kind of action potential which is happening this is called as inspiratory ramp signal it is like a ramp so there is a slow increase and then it stops and then there is beginning of expiration again there is a slow increase again it stops again there is beginning of expiration again the third impulse comes again it increases again it stops and again there is beginning of so this is inspiration this is expiration this is inspiration this is expiration so such a kind of activity is what is called as inspiratory ramp signal inspiratory ramp signal so it is said that the inspiration occurs for a period of 2 seconds allowing the lungs to be filled gradually as here you can see the lung volume is increasing 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 and it reaches to this point and after that there is expiration which is a passive process this is at rest i am telling at rest so this volume of air which a person inhales or exhales okay at rest this is what is called as the tidal volume okay and this inhalation and exhalation both are occurring slowly they are not occurring suddenly that is what i mean to say so if at all they are asking you regarding the regulation of respiration don't limit yourself to writing regarding drg vrg pneumotaxic center and the apneustic center please include this part also write regarding the inspiratory ramp signal so this is what you are supposed to write it's not a sudden burst of action potential but it increases slowly and then it reaches a crescendo crescendo means the topmost point and then it stops something is there which is stopping it and then expiration is going to begin so inspiration is for a period of 2 seconds and expiration is for a period of 3 seconds and again there is a ne next round of inspiration and then expiration and th this goes on happening okay so let's go to let's go to pneumotaxic and the apneustic center so where is pneumotaxic center pneumotaxic center is of course located in the pons so this is our pons in the upper pons it is located pneumotaxic center to be more accurate we have to again remember this it is located in nucleus parabrachialis or it is also called as colliker fuse nucleus this is where pneumotaxic center is located and then in the lower part of the pons there is one more center which is called as apneustic center it is called as apneustic center so now what is the role of the pneumotaxic center and the apneustic center it is said that it is said that the apneustic center is constantly stimulating the dorsal respiratory group of neurons 
it is constantly stimulating the dorsal respiratory group of neurons what the dorsal respiratory group of neurons are doing they are causing inspiration they are causing inspiration during quiet breathing okay now there is one more center which is called as pneumotaxic center and this pneumotaxic center is going to inhibit the apneustic center so whenever the pneumotaxic center inhibits the apneustic center what apneustic center was doing it was stimulating the drp this stimulus from the apneustic center to the dorsal respiratory group of neurons is going to stop at that point now for a moment the dorsal respiratory group of neurons fail to fire that is going to stop the inspiration so when i was telling you regarding the ramp activity i told that the dorsal respiratory group of neurons are continuously firing to the inspiratory muscles and this inspiratory ramp signal is rising 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 and it reaches a crescendo when it reaches a crescendo there is something which is putting a full stop on this crescendo so that inspiration is stopping and then expiration is beginning so the thing which puts a full stop on this crescendo is the pneumotaxic center which is said to be acting via the apneustic center so it is said to inhibit the apneustic center and hence apneustic center is now not having any influence on the dorsal respiratory group of neurons and hence the inspiration is stopped so once the inspiration has stopped the expiration is beginning because of the elastic recoiling of the lungs and it's a passive process so pneumotaxic center has got a very very important role if somebody asks you what is the role of the pneumotaxic center indirectly the pneumotoxic center is inhibiting the dorsal respiratory group of neurons and it is limiting the inspiration okay it is limiting the inspiration so pneumotaxic center is said to control what is called as a switch off point of the inspiratory ramp that is inspiratory ramp is generated action potential is increasing increasing someone should switch off the inspiration okay this is what is called as inspiratory switch off point very important to write this in your exams inspiratory switch off point once the inspiration is switched off there is beginning of expiration there is a beginning of expiration so pneumotaxic center is very important it is controlling the switch off point thus it is limiting the inspiration so if at all there is damage to the pneumotaxic center there is a prolonged inspiratory gasp the person keeps on inspiring because there is nothing which is stopping this inspiration inspiration keeps on occurring and such a kind of breathing wherein there are prolonged bouts of inspiration occurring they are that that is called as apneusis that is what is called as apneusis okay so remember this point so now we have clear cut roles of what drg does what vrg does and how the pneumotaxic center controls the inspiration via the apneustic center so let's just summarize the entire events so there are four centers which control which are uh, involved in the so called automatic control of breathing so which are those four centers come on tell me one is our dorsal respiratory group another one is the ventral respiratory group the third one is our pneumotaxic center and the fourth one is our apneustic center so the dorsal and the ventral respiratory group of neurons these both are present where they are situated in medulla the pneumotaxic and the apneustic center where they are situated yes they are situated in the pons these are the pontine centers so the dorsal respiratory group of the neurons is basically containing i neurons that is it is stimulating inspiration at what point at what time it is stimulating inspiration during the quiet normal breathing 
okay quiet normal breathing now what is vrg doing vrg is coming into action whenever there is an increased need of pulmonary ventilation so that means vrg is going to stimulate the accessory muscles of inspiration as well as expiration that's why vrg is said to have both inspiratory neurons and expiratory neurons as simple as that so quiet normal breathing drg is active increased pulmonary ventilation the impulses from the drg are going to spill into vrg what is the role of pneumotaxic center pneumotaxic center has got a very important role it acts via the apneustic center and it inhibits the dorsal respiratory group of neurons okay it is inhibiting the dorsal respiratory group of neurons and the word which i told you that it is acting as a inspiratory switch off point inspiratory switch off point so it is basically switching off the inspiration so that there is beginning of the expiration it's still clear so this pneumotaxic center is the one which is very important in controlling the rate as well as the rhythm of not exactly the rhythm it helps in controlling the rate and the depth of breathing how let's say the pneumotaxic center is stimulated repeatedly then what is going to happen let's say the drg has initiated the process of inspiration now the pneumotaxic center has become active so it has limited the inspiration so now again there is expiration again pneumotaxic center acts and again it limits the inspiration now there is expiration again the pneumotaxic center acts limitation again there is expiration now what is happening here is that the lung volume is not Filling, filling completely so what is happening to the depth of the inspiration the depth of the inspiration is decreasing okay now because the pneumotaxic center is again and again stopping the inspiration the gap between one cycle to another cycle of inspiration and expiration is reducing so what is happening to the rate of inspiration the rate of inspiration is increasing so this is what is going to happen when the pneumotaxic center is stimulated more but what is going to happen when the pneumotaxic center is inhibited more or it is not acting at more regular intervals at that point of time what is happening to this ramp signal the ramp signal keeps on increasing there is nothing which is stopping it it increases it increases it increases maybe now the pneumotaxic center acts and the inspiration is stopped now there is beginning of inspiration beginning of expiration expiration occurs 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 nowhere pneumotaxic center is to be found and now the pneumo inspiration is occurring and now pneumotaxic center comes into play and now there is beginning of expiration so now what has happened the distance between the two cycles has increased so what has happened to the rate of inspiration rate of inspiration has come down but what has happened to the depth of inspiration because there is nothing which is limiting the inspiration the person keeps on inhaling the air the depth of inspiration has increased so that means it's the pneumotaxic center which is playing a very important role in controlling the rate of respiration as well as the depth of respiration even though the dorsal respiratory group is the one which is producing the impulses the switch off point which is controlling which is controlled is by the pneumotaxic center i hope the regulation of respiration is crystal clear in your head okay so thank you for listening and watching this video and if you have really uh, understood the concept behind the regulation of inspiration only then like only then share and only then subscribe to my channel because a lot more is coming in the coming days thanks a lot